So the way that this book kind of came about was my agent rang me at like 8pm on a Friday evening, which is either a really good or a really bad sign. And she said, um, can you sit down for a second? And I was like, oh no, what's happened? Have I been fired from books? And she said, Puffin and BBC Books would like you to write an anthology of Doctor Who short stories about the villains. And I just blacked out for a little while. And then when I came to, I was like, of course, I'd be delighted. And I think it's... It's, it's their Christmas book, so they wanted like sort of a hint of Christmas in the stories, and I'm in the new series of Doctor Who, there are no old classic villains, so I think they wanted to give something to the fans who grew up with the Daleks and Cybermen, so each story focuses around a different villain, and because there's a huge amount of lore, um, like 36 seasons and like 50, 56, 57 years worth of lore, it was really fun to pick up the tools that other people had created and like use them to tell a story myself, so it's been a lot of fun. So, yeah, I think that's a really interesting question. Uh, in the intro to 12 Angels Weeping, I talk about how uh, Christmas is halfway into the dark and halfway, it's like that halfway point and we, we, we celebrate being trapped between these two states of light and dark. With Nights of the Borrowed Dark, I grew up on books that didn't shy away from talking about dark topics like horror or like grief, and I wanted to do the same due diligence to young readers. So I didn't want to pretend that childhood is this like lovely, sweet and wonderful time. And I'm a big horror buff and I love writing monsters. So Nights of the Borrowed Dark is a story of a 13 year old who is drafted into a magical destiny that he really doesn't want to be part of because he, like any other 13 year old, is very sharp and very quick and suffers a lot from anxiety and worries about his actions having, like heroes and stories tend to be totally fine with their actions, influencing millions of people. Dead isn't hard because 13 years old and he's afraid of even influencing himself. So I got to really play, have fun with what it's like to live on the edge of a very scary and dark destiny and still just want to be a person. And so I think the best stories have a little bit of dark in them. And I think that like people sometimes shy away from showing that to kids. But the best thing about darkness in kids fiction is that it's darkness that is trapped between pages and you can put it down and walk away. It's not like darkness you get in the real world. And I think kids figure out how to process darkness from reading stories. Like they, they figure out how to deal with grief, how to deal with depression, how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with shape-shifting monsters. And like, we're doing them a disservice if we don't show them that. And if we don't show them a way to get out of it, like the books are about going into the dark, but also about coming out the other side. Yeah, I think that like the, what I like about the age group that I write for is that it's at the point where you realise you are not just an extension of your parents, you are a person with thoughts and dreams and fears and opinions. And middle grade is, uh, which is a, a terrible Americanism, but like the, the, the 8 to 12, 11 to 14 bracket is about children realising that their own actions have weight and they can choose to do things. And that might be against what their family want or what, uh, what their school wants, but life is about them forging a path, not just following other people. And I think that's, that, and I think like, I don't know, how else are they supposed to learn, aside from books? Like, I mean, you, you learn, you see other people go out and be heroic and make choices, and that inspires you to do the same. Uh, and often you see people in difficult situations and you say, oh, well, I was in a situation like that. Like, I have, I have a story that I tell about a kid who asked me a bunch of questions at a Night to the Borough Dark event about Dennison's father in the book who has passed away. And there was something about the way that he kept asking me that, like, really just, like, followed me, followed me home, and I was thinking about it all week. And later on, I was getting a taxi, and his taxi, the taxi driver was his dad. And he was like, oh, well, I lost my mother recently, and my kid is now very concerned with death and very concerned with reading stories with people who've lost people they love, because he doesn't know how to feel. And like, just to be a part of that and to in any way help that kid was really just like, it's a really lovely feeling. And where else are they going to get it, you know? That's a really interesting question. I, so I've done, this morning I did my 417th event in the last two years. Oh, well, good. Fair play, keeping track. Yeah, I'm very tired. <laughs> um, and my favourite bits, unequivocally, are the bits where I talk to children and figure out what they, because so much of writing is you in a, in a, alone in a room, whereas when you're in front of kids, they will tell you what they like and tell you what they didn't like, and they will, you lose that, it's a pity that you lose that confidence to say, I don't understand what you just said, please explain it back. Because that's, that's on us, not on the person who didn't understand. So I've had amazing interactions with kids. Um, I've been asked, uh, I had a girl in Germany um, put up her hand like a snake unfolded from a basket, and she's just like, 
I have a question. And it's like, what's your question? And she's like, tell us about your first breakup. And I was like, cool. So I did. And I cried and she cried. And it was amazing. Um, I've had kids, like, genuinely have no idea how you go from being a person who likes stories to being a writer. And the fact that I get to, because it's, which I can understand. I mean, like, when you look at a writer and there's, every single writer has a different origin story. Like being a doctor is very difficult, but there's a linear path. Whereas um, there just isn't that with writing. So just for, just for 20 minutes, I get to be the receptionist of my profession and make things that little bit easier and like stop them from making any of the mistakes that I made. Uh, and obviously go off and make their own. But like, I, I view that as like a really like, almost like a sacred duty. It's like the idea that I can make things easier for other people. And like, I've had some really funny and strange uh, interactions. I'm trying to think of like one of my favorites now. Um, I've had, I ha on the day of The Endless King, the last book in the Knights of the Borrowed Dark trilogy came out, um, this girl came to the launch, and she was about 17 or 18, and like, I'm very lucky that like, my fans are much cooler than I am. She walked up and like, I signed the book for her and I said, um, I hope you enjoy it. And she was like, I've read it. I was like, it came out today, how have you read it? She was like, I've read it. I was like, did you enjoy it? And she went, nailed it, just walked off. And I was like, so cool, why am I not that cool? And then I've had, I've had kids tell me I'm their favorite writer, um, I've had kids tell me what they didn't like about the book, which is educational for me and hilarious for everyone else. Um, and it'll be interesting with, with Twelve Angels Weeping because, you know, with, with Nights in the Bar Dark, I was in charge. I was my book and my ideas. So all I had to worry about was being good or being bad. Whereas with this book, because people have preconceived notions about Doctor Who, I also have the potential to be wrong. Um, so I'm excited to see what I've gotten wrong and I will just try and explain it by some like time magic or something. So yeah, so it's, it's the interactions are my favorite part. Like I really love hearing what people, what people have gotten out of what I've put them down. That's a, again, a really good question. I think my three tips to anybody who wants to become a fantasy author and create a enduring and enjoyable world, the first thing you have to do is read. Like when you want to be a writer, you are trying to enter an ecosystem and that's something that needs to be studied. You need to see what's been done, what's been overdone, and most importantly, what hasn't been done before. Once you've done that and you've seen what stories haven't been told, you need to think about what what you love. Like every writer is first a fan and you're going to be spending a lot of time in this world, so you need to, in a way, write for yourself and Find the bits of this world that interest you. Find the bits that make you happy. Find, writing is in a weird way, amazing revenge. Because if you see an idea badly done elsewhere, you can take it yourself, take it apart and redo it. Um, so make a list of the things that really annoy you in fantasy and address and redeem each and every one of them. That's a lot of fun. Finally, I would say, think about the details. Everything in your story will impact everything else. And nothing is more flow breaking or or boring or off-putting than when you realize somebody has ignored a, 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 a rule just so they can get their story told. So in Knights of the Bar of Dark, the more they use their powers, the more they turn to iron because I, I wanted power to have a cost and I wanted bravery to have a cost. And the defining factor of the Knights is it slows them and hurts them to do what they do, but they do it anyway because it's the right thing to do. And if you're inventing a power system, or if you're inventing some advantage for your characters, in introduce a disadvantage. Keep things, it sounds weird to say realistic, but everything has a cost. What matters is what you do with that cost and how you pay it. So when you've created these big, gigantic worlds and these, these, these lists of things you like, make sure that you've grounded it in human cost and human bravery and human sacrifice as well.